Now talking of dates and chronology brings me to the topic of this video and the first chapter of history, how, when and where. Now we all know how important dates are, isn't it? Imagine your friend might call you a day after your birthday and give you a belated happy birthday wish. But your birthday is your birthday. It would be just special if a good friend wishes you on that very day, isn't it? Now similarly or rather more importantly, history is all about dates, days and years. You may not know this, but there was a time when historians were fascinated with dates. A room full of historians would be chaotic with heated debates about the dates on which rulers were crowned or battles were fought. So like I said before, history was synonymous and is synonymous with dates. You may find history boring or though tough because of this reason, but believe me, this is just one tiny part of it. History is so glorious and magnificent that if one has a right perspective, it is nothing more but a story. In fact, the name itself has story in it, which says his story. And it tells us all about the changes, good or bad, disastrous or revolutionary, that occurred over time. And it is about finding how things were in the past and how things have changed now. And as soon as we compare the past with the present, we refer to time, a walk of before and after. Now there are innumerable things around us and some of them have existed since the dawn of this planet and some others are relatively recent. But everything has a time, a date, an year attached to it. It may not be precise but it has a tentative timeline attached to it. But living in this world we do not always ask historical questions about what we see around us. We seem to take things for granted as if what we see has always been in the world as we inhabited it. But sometimes things make us curious and we tend to take an added interest in it. And then we ask questions to which we have our moments of wonder. And these questions are actually historical. These historical questions take us back in time to when the events actually happened. Well, history may be largely associated with dates and years, but these factors are not only important ones when we talk about the historical events. When it comes to history, time does not have to always be precisely dated in the terms of a particular year or a month. Actually, sometimes it is incorrect to fix precise dates to processes that happened over a long period of time. Now, let me give you an example of India itself. Tea is a beverage that most Indians love. It is their go-to beverage before starting a day. And it is also the beverage that people prefer having in the evening time. But people in India did not begin drinking tea one fine day. They developed a taste for it over the years. And there is no one clear date when Indians began drinking tea itself. It is not something that happened overnight. And similarly, we cannot fix one single date on which British rule was established or the national movement started. Or for that matter, when and where the changes took place within the economy and the society. These are important events that started off slowly and spread their roots in society. We can only refer to a span of time, an approximate time period in which the particular changes became visible. Just like we saw, history is attached to a string of dates. A particular event can be spread across a century or a decade depending on its time of occurrence. But history has always been about a string of dates and years and there was a reason to this. There was a time when history was an account of battles and big events. And it was about rulers and their policies. Historians wrote about the year a king was crowned and the year he married. The year he and his queen had a child and the year he fought a particular war. The year he died and the year in which the next ruler succeeded to the throne. So it was about the small, various but significant events and hence there were several important dates that had to be noted. But there could have been a difference in opinions among the historians about these dates which led to debates. However, with passage of time, historians too have shifted their focus. They now write about a host of other events and other questions. They look at how people earned their livelihood, what they produced and ate, how cities developed and markets emerged and thrived, how kingdoms were formed and new ideas spread, and how cultures and society 
changed and evolved. So if history is all about a string of events and dates on which these events occurred, what helps one decide which dates are important and which are not? What makes history worth remembering and revisiting after all? Well, the dates we select, the dates around which we compose our story of the past, are not important on their own. When coming to the fact that history is being so vast and diverse, what are the sources that historians need when writing about it? Where is all this information stored and available for sourcing? Well, hold on to your horses because we will be learning all that in the next segment. Join me in the second segment of this chapter, how, when and where. Catch you soon. Bye. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on Apple App Store or Google Play Store.